Doing background replacements on portraits and headshots used to be such a daunting task, but if you stick with us in this episode of Photography 180, I'll show you how easy Evoto AI makes it, and I'll also show you how to start creating your own database of backdrops. Welcome back to the series, guys. This episode is all about uh, Evoto AI and how easy it is to swap out backgrounds and also how we go about creating one uh, or multiple to keep in our database of backdrops. Uh, so what I do have here is I have this black canvas drop. I have one light behind creating a halo or, uh, effect in the center. Uh, and I'm using this styrofoam head as my focal point. So what I wanna do is at F3.2, I wanna make sure I'm focusing at something that's going to be a consistent distance, such as my subject. And then this way the background can appear realistic when I actually go to do a swap and it's emulating that same scenario. So I lock in focus, I hit manual focus there, take out whatever it is you're focusing on, fire off a frame, and now I have a picture of just the backdrop, perfect for head and shoulders headshot around this distance. You wanna stay fairly consistent when you actually go ahead and shoot the, uh, the headshot itself. Um, and so you can probably name accordingly, give yourself some clues as to how uh, you went ahead and created it, just so that you can use it and have realistic results uh, when you do the swap. So let's take this image, let's go to my computer and we'll jump right in and show you how easy it is. Okay guys, so here we are in Evoto AI and I have this picture of myself that I had taken against uh, just a white wall without light on it. So it was basically a great backdrop. Um, and I wanna use this as an example of a uh, headshot that we use to swap out the background. Uh, I've imported the shot I took of the background just earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that uh, in uh, starting with camera raw. Now here I can manipulate it if I'd like. So maybe I'm gonna add just a little bit of a boost, um, let's say to the uh, sort of a whitish, the, the lighter area in the middle there. What I might do is maybe just adjust the gradient just a little bit. So if I add a kind of a radial gradient just to really enhance um, that highlight. I'm going to invert that mask and then just kind of pull down the background a little bit. Just make it a little bit more of a stark contrast. I could have done this maybe using a 20 degree grid instead of a 40 degree grid. Um, but let's go ahead and save that out um, to this background folder as a JPEG. So here is the um, backdrop that I did go ahead and create. Now what I'd like to also do here is while I have it open, I'm gonna go ahead and create a few different uh, versions of this. Um, so that could be by any means, we're just looking to manipulate maybe the color a little bit. Um, so we're just trying different things. Uh, it could be any method you wanna use uh, to create some different uh, looks from the same uh, drop. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and save that one out. Uh, we'll just call it number four, it's totally fine. And I've actually already created a couple other ones to show you. So now back in Evoto AI with my headshot open, uh, we have under this section here, we have background adjustments. And in there we have headshot backdrop changer. Now there's a couple of recommended ones we could use here. So if I wanted to say swap the gray for pure white, we can go with something like that. We can, uh, they have a fabric option here as well, uh, which is awesome. But then they also have this ability to do my backdrops. Now this is where you can go ahead and add JPEGs um, of other drops. And that's the one I just created here. And now what I can do is, um, you know, simply by clicking in on that, uh, here's a red one I created, more of a teal color, and this is the original. Um, I now have this ability to mix and match as needed. Maybe the client preferred a different uh, color to match branding that was established later after the fact. Um, but the, the truth of the matter is you can start building a database. Here's one I did uh, a while back um, with sort of a blue, a navy blue background paper. And again, the highlight. So it's really kind of awesome just to have this ability to swap in and out and you know, you can provide some additional variety. Um, maybe not something your clients are asking for, but it's something that you could present them as a bonus. Um, and again, if it's something that matches more to the brand colors that they were after perhaps, um, then that's only to your advantage to cater to their needs like that. So that's how easy it is in Evoto just to start establishing all different types of drops that you might 
um, you know, find yourself frequently using. And what it can do is if you're doing this, like, so we had a, uh, another example where we shot a headshot, someone in studio, but then we also went out on location and did multiple others from the same company using the same setup. Now, setting up here in studio and then replicating that back out on site, it's never going to be quite perfect, but I did the exact same process here and I saved this particular backdrop. Uh, and I put it in the database now anytime where I saw maybe some inconsistencies where we were shooting in the backdrop The highlight was maybe off to the side a little bit too much We went ahead and replaced it using this file in Evoto. It was one two three got us right back to uh, That sweet spot we were after and it's just amazing how easy that is to do so uh, Definitely if you haven't used Evoto yet, you got to check it out These tools are available to us and they make our lives so much easier when we need them to be uh, and so I can't support them more for that. So go ahead, you can try. There's a link down below. If you could grab some free credits, give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Appreciate you checking out this episode. Hope it's been helpful and I look forward to seeing you guys next week.